What's going on guys, it's Jay and welcome back. As you can see, we're back in the Sonata, we're back in the family sedan. Wednesday, Thursday I think last week. It was ready on Wednesday, but they couldn't get it out of limp mode. So it was in like another day. 4,000 miles on it, has a new turbo. And it's supposed to be the same turbo like from the engines, but like this turbo in here is like, it's completely like, it doesn't pull like the other one. Cause you already know I had to go test it. I, I hadn't been really beating on it lately. I kind of been taking it easy on the car but I did have to go test it one time to make sure just everything was okay. But like this, this turbo, like it kicks in and it just keeps going. Like I, I don't even remember when like it kind of cut out. Car's running good, sounds good, everything's good. Tune will be here Tuesday or sooner. So get that on and we have plenty of parts that we got to put on along with that. Today is gonna be a different video. I've been getting questions and I see people always have like the paddles. Nowadays have like the, it's not really manual mode. It's like semi-manual or the sport shift or whatever you want to call it. Nobody knows how to use it really. So this video, I'm going to try to explain how my car has both. I have the bump shifter and the paddles. Me personally, I use the paddles because it's more of like a, it's more of a responsive click rather than the, the bump shifter is okay, but it's just most cars. It's like, it's just going to be kind of mushy feeling. And I just don't really like that. I just like the, the responsive click. Plus the paddles is like right here by my hands. So it's just, everything's more convenient. That being said, let's get right into it. So I'm not cool. Like it's just a six. So I have to like hold my phone with one hand and drive with the other. But before we get going, I'm just going to kind of go through and everyone knows these are your rpms this is don't worry about your speed we're just gonna worry about the rpms the rpms is how fast your engine's moving how fast your pistons and all that's going up and down not really your pistons that's how fast your crank's going but we're just gonna keep this simple normal terminology that's just how fast your engine's moving lower gears first gear is gonna be short each gear gets longer and longer they get taller and taller as you go so first gear is gonna rev up really fast and you shift Second gear is gonna be a little bit longer, third gear is a little bit longer, and so forth. A lot of people's gonna tell you to watch your RPMs, but like when you're first trying to learn this, it's gonna be really I've seen I've taught a couple people how to do it and like they get overwhelmed because they're trying to drive, they're trying to watch the RPMs, they're trying to shift the gears, and when you're trying to learn something like this, like people get over overwhelmed and then they just tend to like either they start spamming the gears, they start just shifting up randomly, and then they end up in sixth gear going like 20 miles an hour. So that's, you don't want to do that. With that being said, you want to listen to your engine. It's more of an auditory thing. Yes, the RPMs is going, that's real that you can watch the RPMs. If that's what you're comfortable doing and you want to watch the RPMs, then by all means do that. But for me, I learned how to shift gears on a, a four wheeler and they don't have RPM gauges, obviously. So when I learned, it was more of an auditory. I just listened for the engine as it revved up, I shift gears, as it revved up again, you know what I'm saying? So it's more of an auditory thing. If you're just starting out, try to just listen to your engine. Like, don't worry about the RPMs. I mean, you can look at them as like a reference, but like, just try to try to make it more auditory because it's auditory, that's one less thing you have to worry about is pushing the gas steering and shifting. And like I said, I, my car has an exhaust on it, so the, the sound is a little bit more, it's a little bit more enhanced so I can hear my engine. So if you don't have an exhaust, it's fine. You can still hear your engine. You just listen for it revving. Like you know how your engine sounds when you get on it really hard and it starts revving up. And when it revs up, you shift it. But you don't wanna you don't wanna shift it when it I see some people shift gears. They shift as soon as they hear like they hear any bit of sound from the motor, they shift the gear. But that, that's not how you wanna do it. And you also don't wanna do it where like your engine's like revving up like it's about to like fucking it's revving his brains out. Like you don't wanna be like way up here shifting gears like now if you're like racing or doing something like a hard acceleration then i can understand it being up there but it's normal driving you don't want to just be every time red line every time red line you don't want to do that i'm just going to give out a demonstration but we're just going to do normal driving we're not going to do nothing extreme see me i personally I might just, I mean, it depends. Like if you're trying to be really gas efficient, then I, yeah, you want to shift a little earlier, but when I start hearing it, like a little bit more than, than it's not extremely revving, but like I just listen to the engine rev and then this is going to be your up gear. This is going to be your down gear. So when you're speeding up, 
and your rev. We'll I'll talk about downshifting in a second. Just driving. I'm gonna just I'm gonna do it a little bit more exaggerated so you can hear what I mean. So you can hear the engine. You just hear it revving. That's when you wanna you wanna shift gears. Now if you wanna watch RPMs, if you wanna do it that way, most of the time you wanna shift around. 2,500 to 3,000 if you're just driving, just normal driving, just around, somewhere around 25, anywhere between two and three. That's just gonna be normal, normal shifting. Now, if you're just getting on it a little bit more aggressive, that'd be more towards three. Or if you're wanting to like pass someone, obviously you're gonna be a little bit above three. You always just wanna shift anywhere between two and three. The whole point of the shifters is like, when you're more in a performance like if you're racing you want your gears to hang longer so you can stay because every car has a certain power band my power band is between three and four and a half like somewhere here this is my power band right here so three to five is my power band so when i'm in this shifter mode that allows me to keep my car within the power band Let's say i'm going around some curves or something i can keep my car within the power band keep my power as I'm going come out of a turn you know what I mean like just things like that now a lot of cars have the sport mode you can put it in and that does a similar thing it holds your gears longer and it holds them in your power band it holds your gears longer so you can get more power you can get away a little bit more with the with the shifters you can rip it out a little bit more but it's not fully automatic I mean it's not fully manual so don't think this is like manual where you can just be banging it off the red line and shit like that like the car if you rev it up too high or you let it bog down too low, it will still shift gears on its own. So that's more of a semi, semi manual. It's still automatic, but the car is just allowing you to shift where you want to pretty much. Now downshifting is the opposite. When you hear the engine kind of bogging down, like now I don't really hear anything, you shift down. It's just kind of like bogging down. That's when you shift down, but it also depends when what speed you're at. Like you don't want to be in sec. You don't want to be in third gear going 30 miles an hour and then start shifting down to like second gear or first gear because that you don't want to shift. When you shift down, your RPMs are going to shoot up by 500 RPMs. So like if I'm at two, let me get to three so I can be a better example. See how I'm at? Let me get to two. So when I'm at two. Shift down. A little bit more than 2500 because I wasn't exactly on two, but you get what I mean. When you shift down, you always got to compensate for your RPMs because they will shoot up. Also, when you're going to pass, most of your power is going to be higher, like a little bit higher in the power band. So, like, let me shift up here. You get to like fourth gear and give you an example. All right, see, I'm at 2000 RPMs. I'm not in my power band right now. So, say I want to speed up or pass someone you drop a gear and it shoots up and it puts me in my power range so that's the whole point downshifting is to regain power and put you in your power band and it's for it can help you slow down with the engine braking everything just works together like as one like the engines turn at one speed and the transmission goes to one speed like it's real that's really the technical part so if you want to get technical with it that's how it goes but when you're just an everyday driver I'm not saying I'm like a race car driver or no shit like that. I'm just saying like, if you're just every day on the street, normal driving, then you don't need to really, it doesn't really, you don't really have to understand all that to know how it fully works. Now, if you, the more you understand how it works, the better you become at this. Like I can, I understand pretty much how it works. I'm not a, I mean, I, I'm, I know a little bit about mechanical stuff. I'm not like a genius. I'm not perfect at it, but I know enough. So I understand how this works a little bit. So it allows me to work, to operate it better. So if you can learn more how it works, then you can obviously operate the system better. This is a six speed. Luckily, my car has a gear indicator, which that helps a lot. Some cars don't. I can't really put it into words, but I have my cruise. It didn't have a gear indicator, but like I know how gears sound. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. Sometimes I would be like, okay, I'm in third gear, but I would actually be in second. I pretty much know how each gear sounds, so I would know what gear I was in. I wouldn't really have to sit there and count. But when you first start off, it's a good it's a good idea to like kind of keep track of what gear you're in. Like listen for every time you shift gears, just keep in mind like around what gear you're in because you don't want to be lugging your engine, especially in a turbo car. Do not lug your turbo. Like don't be at 2,000 RPMs and then try to gun it. Like that's, 
you always downshift. If you ever feel like you're having to speed up for some reason, downshift. Unless you're already up in your RPMs, don't just gun it in a low RPM. But another, also the same thing is for downshift, and don't be way up in your R. Don't be at like 4,000 RPMs and then shift down. Like that's not. You don't want to do that because, like I said, your gears, your RPMs are going to shoot up every time you shift down. They shoot up. This is also by. This is also where you. You can do the bump shifter but I, like i said i use the paddles if you guys have any questions i'm here just comment below like subscribe share with your friends and like i said if you have any questions my best best places to hit me up are on social medias i reply they're the best um i'm always active on social media but with that being said appreciate you guys watching if i helped in any way please leave a like and I'll catch you guys on the next one.